freaking episode, not like last week's bullshit. Where it's like, oh my god, Iris, will you marry me after I just sang you a freaking song? No, 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 no. You end it like they just did with this episode with freaking Killer Frost showing up, baby. Woo! That is right. We freaking got Killer Frost finally after all of season of freaking I don't want my powers. I don't want my powers. I don't want my powers. She finally showed up after she died. That is right. Freaking, I've said that is right like that is right many times. Freaking Caitlyn died in this episode and symbolically Caitlyn died and became Killer Frost. I just want to say Joe f you for freaking killing my beautiful Caitlyn, you bitch. You know what this freaking season has been? It hasn't been about Savitar or freaking trying to save Iris. No, this whole season has low key been about the West family freaking f up. Wally did it. Iris did it, and now Joe did it. They're all making mistakes and doing all these things that are causing other people problems. What are you guys doing, West family? It's true, they've all made mistakes this freaking season, forcing other people to do other things. They're just, mm, uh, selfish. Now we got freaking Barry going to the future to freaking find out what's gonna happen with Iris because he got tired of changing the past, so he's gonna try to change the future now. But technically, you change the future by changing the past. But you know what I mean. Anyways, back to freaking Caitlyn turning into Killer Frost. Like I said, that was an amazing ending for this episode because, you know, he, she was just talking. You thought she got out of the freaking, you know, danger zone, which always happens on The Flash. They always save their friends. And then she freaking starts going into convulsions and seizuring and shit. And then she dies. And then freaking Malfoy was all like, nah, f this bitch. And she pulls off the freaking necklace. And then, boom, she freaking turned in to freeze dust. And I was like, what? And then she freaking came back all blonde and sexy and was like, I'm Killer Frost, bitch. That was easily the best ending of this freaking season. I didn't think I was gonna get blessed with two bays in this episode because I got my gypsy bay that showed up and was here for most of the episode and then it ends with the Killer Frost bay and it's all like, what? Anyway, speaking of gypsy bay, we finally got to hear about her past and like why she's so fiery about stuff. It's because she used to have a partner that was kind of a love partner too. And uh, that's one of the reasons why she wanted to kill Kadabra so much, Abracadabra, uh, when he's over here stealing parts because he wants to go back to the 64th century or some shit like that. So he's from the super future. And if he's in the 64th century, how is there still a Flash? And how is it still Barry? Did he freaking like just run all the way to the 64th century? Because I don't think, like, I'm pretty sure he's still in the 20s right now. How the hell has he lived for thousands of years? <clears throat> But what I'm assuming is Kadabra is just a time-traveling villain and he time-traveled to the past and he's been stuck there forever. That is the most logical freaking explanation. Although I don't know how he got to the past and uh, you know, all of that jazz. So I guess that's why he's been Flash's villain this whole time. Flash hasn't lived that long. In case you guys didn't know and you're wondering like where the hell have I seen Kadabra before? Uh, he was the villain in the whole Jerome arc of Gotham and he was also one of the henchmen for the Joker in The Dark Knight. So yeah, you've definitely seen his face a lot of places in comic book shows and movies. I feel like I'm just throwing information everywhere and not really covering anything in this episode. So let's go ahead and talk about it. Uh, for starting with freaking Maitland. We noticed at the start of the episode, Maitland, which is Malfoy and Caitlyn. If you didn't know, it's not Julian and Caitlyn because motherfucker is still Malfoy. So anyways, we got to see their relationship is still on rocks. He doesn't really trust her. He's just not about it. And, uh, you know, she's trying to make things happen. Freaking Abracadabra shows up to Star Labs. He gets shot and she patches him up and she apologizes for everything that she did. And, you know, she didn't want to hurt him and she didn't know, you know, she's been trying to not hurt him as Killer Frost so much that she forgot that she's human and girls hurt guys all the time. Later in the episode, we see the whole thing go down with freaking Joe letting out freaking Abracadabra after they catch him and then he ends up getting my bae Caitlyn hurt over here because freaking Abracadabra blows some shit up and she gets shanked right in her stomach and she's like bleeding out and you're just like, no Caitlyn! And then Caitlyn does the most badass thing ever and she stays awake during surgery and I'm not even gonna lie to the, uh, little I'm not even gonna lie about this. I have a friend that has a condition that freaking has to stay awake during surgery and she's the most badass person I've ever seen. So I kind of thought about my friend when I saw Caitlyn freaking doing her own surgery or talking a freaking person through her own surgery and she's just a badass like that. It's hardcore shit. 
Shout out to my friend who also has to go through that shit. Damn, girl, I don't know how you do that because ouchies. So Caitlyn shows us how much of a badass she is with that whole surgery scene. And she also kind of lets us know that she would much rather die than become Killer Frost, which uh, that kind of didn't work out so much in the end because, uh, you know, Malfoy was a little jealous. And not jealous, but uh, he was a little uh, selfish, I should say. And he wasn't going to let her die, so he'd rather her be Killer Frost than freaking uh, die. So that's gonna cause some problems uh, and some like maybe some uh, relationship issues with freaking Maitland because man, Caitlyn should be dead right now, but uh, you just gave her her worst nightmare. You in trouble, Malfoy. Jumping from one crazy relationship to the next, we got to see uh, freaking some more, uh, what do you say, Cisco and uh, Gypsy Bay action, and he totally said he wanted to get some good vibrations going on between them. You know what that means? You know what I mean? That means sex. Cisco totally wants to vibe her really well, you know what I'm saying? So that was awesome <laughs> because like I love that relationship. Cisco's awesome. I think Gypsy is Bay, and I really want that to happen in there. Uh, but it was just so funny how he was trying to search for, he couldn't freaking vibe Abracadabra because apparently he is so badass that he can't do that. So he was doing it the old fashioned way and she was like, man, I wish I had stuff like this on Earth 19. And he was like, well, uh, I could totally go over there and hook you up, but you know, ooh, I'm gonna need a place to stay. Sweet freaking intro like that, Cisco. I see what you're doing, bro. I see what you're doing and I like it. So Cisco's over here trying to give the one, two punch to Gypsy, but it's not really working out because she is like freaking tunnel visioned here to just kill Abracadabra because he ended up apparently blasting her freaking partner on Earth-19 who was also her lover. So it was cool to get a little insight to Gypsy's past and uh, to see where it's gonna go now because at the end of the episode she asked Cisco, she was like, so what does this mean for us? And he was just like, I don't really know. But it kind of seemed like he was just like, I don't really know, but I still love you and I want you to be my bae. Tell me if any of you guys actually got that feeling too because I didn't think he was, he wasn't really mad when he said I didn't know. He was just like, I don't know. Like he was just like real chill about it. He was like, girl, you know I still love you. Because I would be the same way with Gypsy because she is bae. Speaking of Abracadabra, we found out that he was going to all of these high tech places and stealing things he needed because he was building a mother time machine. And am I the only one that gets pissed that Flash and Legends of Tomorrow have not crossed over? And I know it has to happen next season, right? Like they have to make an episode where time travel shows, which are Flash and Legends of Tomorrow, crossover. They're on the same night now. You could have back-to-back -back episodes and basically make it a two-hour event, which would be amazing for both shows. There's got to be a, a freaking thing when they just have to go against each other. Like, the legends are like, Barry, you keep f***ing up the time so much that we need to come back and we need to shut you down. And he's all like, I need to do this because Iris' life is in danger for the fifth freaking fourth episode or a freaking fourth season, whatever. You know, it's going to be the same storyline over and over because that's what the freaking Flash does recently. But anyways, they need to do that. So, speaking of time travel, freaking Abracadabra's over here trying to get his from all of these places and they mentioned Stag Industries and that has a lot of Easter eggs in it if you guys don't know. I'm not gonna go into everything with Stag Industries but it does have some ties to freaking the Orb of Ra and if you guys don't know what the Orb of Ra is that is what turns in Metamorpho I think is his name uh, but he is a villain that actually ends up fighting Black Adam at one point and a whole bunch of other you know, he's in a bunch of other storylines too. It stopped recording right there. But anyways, Stag Industries is like, he's been in Gotham Comics, he's been in Arrow Comics, he's been in Flash Comics. So it's just one of those industries kind of like LexCorp or freaking uh, Wayne Enterprises. You know, that kind of stretches across different comic books. But Stag Industries, you guys also might know that it was in the Dark Knight games. He was one of the villains you had to take down because he was trying to use, uh, I think if I remember correctly, the storyline, it's been a while since I played the game, uh, he was in the, he was one of the villains or the people you caught or fought in the, uh, you didn't fight him, but you helped him out. He was in the blimp, one of the blimps in the Dark Knight area and you had to help him like get, you know, get off, uh, get off. That's not the way I wanted to say that. You had to help him escape, but then you find out that he's actually a bad dude and you're like, F that guy. So that was Simon Stagg in the video game form, but he's been in some other stuff. Uh, in the comic books as well. So that was a little Easter egg in case you guys didn't know. Of course, Kadabra gets everything he needs and he gets that little badass orb thing 
from uh, Star Labs, and that's going to allow him to travel to the future. And when he was talking about how uh, Cisco was talking about, he was like, he has everything that I needed to build so and so's time machine, which is Reverse Flash from season one. Uh, I completely forgot he did that, man. I need to go back and rewatch the first seasons uh, just to get my brain refreshed. But I forgot he actually built the time machine uh, to do that, and then he had that power source, and he found he finally figured out how. Uh, that power source worked to get him to the time travel. So Abracadabra also knew that, and that's what he was going to use to travel to freaking through time or whatever. And of course, it was foiled by the two vibration people and the two speedsters. Uh, so uh, good vibrations all around for everybody because they caught him. And that is how they caught Abracadabra the second time because the first time they had him dead to rights, but no, Joe had to go and everything up. Damn you, West family. Before Gypsy takes Abracadabra back to Earth-19, we see that Barry asks him one last time, like I'm asking you as a human being, can you tell me what's going on with Savador? And of course, Abracadabra says that, you know, now he feels like he can be a part of Iris's death, even though Savitar made the biggest impact on Barry's life. If you guys saw the previews to the next episode, you know that Barry goes all Spider-Man 3 and becomes super emo, apparently, after Iris's death. So, we're gonna get a little bit of emo Barry when the series comes back at the end of April. It's happening. The breaks are coming. With Abracadabra not telling Barry what's gonna happen, Barry has decided to run to the future, and that is what's going to set up for the next episode and how we're going to see Emo Barry and all of, the all of that jazz. And The Flash is supposed to get a new suit. Now, I don't know if that's a new suit that he's going to be bringing back or if it's just going to be a new suit we're going to see in that episode because I'm going to assume that Emo Barry is going to stop being Emo and he's going to go back to being The Flash. So we're going to go ahead and see what's going on in that whole situation. Another thing about that preview and Barry running to the future is he, he freaking runs to 2024. And if you guys don't know what 2024 is, it's actually the year on the newspaper that we have seen since season one. And that kind of sucks because that means nothing crazy happened to him. That <laughs> the Flash just disappears in 2024 because he's emo. That's right, people. Flash doesn't get trapped in the Speed Force. He doesn't freaking go to another world or universe. He doesn't join the Justice League. Nothing like that. He just becomes emo in 2024. And that means that just... Uh, the whole build-up for 2024 just seems really lame. Now, I know you freaking hardcore Flash fans are going to attack me. Well, Juice, uh, 2024, that's a long year, and that doesn't mean that this is actually that event. It could be other things, blah, 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 blah. I know you're going to come at me with that. So, yes, I know that it could actually be something else that happens later in time, but let's, let's be real. It's because he's emo. Also, I might do a trailer breakdown for that particular episode because one, we don't get another Flash episode for a whole month, and two, there might be a lot of hints in that episode because Caitlin, or I should say Killer Frost, says you're gonna be so surprised. I'm going to assume that she is referring to Savitar's identity, meaning we're going to get another reveal of somebody that we've seen before and it's just gonna suck. And I'm, really, Flash, come on. Like, I'm just, you're gonna make me speechless with another stupid reveal of somebody that we've seen before. You've done it plenty of times. Change it up. Make it somebody we don't even know. Don't make it Jay Garrick. Don't make it anybody else. Make it of somebody that has not been in this damn show before, please. And I know a lot of you are gonna be like, oh my God, that means it's gonna be future Flash and it's gonna be freaking Barry and all of that stuff. Why? Why would it be him? Why would it be freaking Barry? Why would he kill Iris when he's just constantly trying to save Iris? It wouldn't make sense. That would just mean that the freaking Flash is gonna end this season on another stupid note, AKA the whole Jay Garrick being the man in the Iron Mask thing. It doesn't make any sense. I'm done with it. We're not gonna get back into that because you guys know I'll go like nine minutes just ranting about that whole thing. Anyways, I wanna know what you guys thought of this freaking episode and how are you going to feel if the freaking Flash does another reveal like it's done all of the freaking time every season? Let me know in the comment sections down below. Guys and gals, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and share it with all your Flash buddies. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button for all things nerdy and geeky on this channel. As always, I am your host, Juicebox. Remember when you wake up in the morning, ask yourself something. Have I made you a little dose of juice? See you guys next time. Bye.